I'd like to welcome all of you, those who have interest in knowing life and teaching of the famous Carmelite saint and martyr Edith Stein. She was a Jewish philosopher, a writer, a convert from Judaism to Christianity, who ended her life in Auschwitz. My name is Father Robert Opala. I am a Carmelite friar uh, in Oxford. And now we will have this opportunity to listen something. There will be a few parts of this lecture, something on Edith Stein, her teaching and her spirituality. Then the title of this of this series on Edith Stein is Edith Stein and the Spirituality of the Cross and Holocaust Spirituality. It is good to venerate the image of Christ crucified and to make pictures to induce devotion to him. But living images are even better than those of wood or stone. This is how Edith Stein, a German philosopher of Jewish origin and a Carmelite nun, described in two simple sentences the spiritual meaning of Christian discipleship. The Second World War like any other war, was such a unique event which paradoxically increased the number of the living images of Christ. Edith Stein was one of them. She was murdered in the gas chamber, fulfilling her inner vocation to carry the cross with the Jewish people. Edith Stein is today venerated in the Catholic Church as a saint because she was a disciple of the crucified Christ, but who lost her life because she was a daughter of Israel. Her autobiography, Life in a Jewish Family, is a fascinating testimony of someone's inner struggle in the search for God. This struggle, however, was not about finding the idea of God as the philosophers usually tended to do, but the living God of love and compassion. She was struggling to find the true and living God, who is God for others, or, as she believed, God of empathy. Her whole life, determined by the call to discipleship of the crucified Christ, as well as her dedication to the primary principle of her life, which was to be a person for others, is one of the most impressive witnesses to Christian obedience to the cross of Christ. This lecture has a specific character. It attempts to present some aspects of Carmelite spirituality in Edith Stein's life and thought. However, these aspects are also essential for the whole Catholic Church and the entire Christianity, as they deal with one of the most important elements of Christian theology and spirituality, which is, as Edith Stein said, the knowledge of the cross. This theology and spirituality was especially important in Edith Stein's life. 
and though because it relates to one of the most crucial events in the human history, the Jewish Holocaust during the Second World War. In this lecture, we will try to look at some aspects of this event from the perspective of the Christian and Carmelite spirituality. So we will try to understand and to know a few very important factors that would help us to understand better Edith Stein's teaching and spirituality and her approach to the discipleship of Christ. We will learn some historical and cultural background of Edith Stein's life. We'll try to understand cultural, historical, political and religious situation in Europe and Germany during the Nazi period. We'll try to understand Edith Stein's intellectual and spiritual formation and growth that led her from Judaism and agnosticism to faith in Jesus Christ and finally to the Carmelite order. We'll try to understand and develop a knowledge of Edith Stein's approach to the cross of Christ, to understand her spiritual, moral and intellectual struggles in Jewish and then Christian Catholic life express in the after Auschwitz theology and spirituality. So first, in this part of our lecture, we'll try to know something more about the historical background in which Edith Stein lived and also the background of her country, Germany. Looking at the history of Germany in the first half of the 20th century, we can view shades of barbarism which could probably amaze most of us. The nation which in its past gave to the world real masterpieces of art, music and literature was engaged during that period in a string of conflicts that destroyed more human beings than all past wars put together. In this talk, we will specially focus on the Nazi-ruled period marked by the gas chamber, the death camps and mass graves, but above all by the hatred towards the Jewish people. The key character of this presentation, Edith Stein, was one of the six million Jews of Europe who lost their life because there were Jews. The First World War, which began in August 1914, did not gain a swift victory as was widely expected in Germany. In August 1918, the German emperor was told by his generals that this war was lost. The peace agreement radically changed not only the status of the German empire, but also the standard of life of ordinary German people. It brought no reconciliation for the new and fragile German Republic but cause additional pain and humiliation. The violent hostility of the German left and the German right was growing. A new variety of political activists seeking to make a desperate attempt to fuse the anger and frustration of both left and right surface after 1920 in the National Socialist German Workers' Party. Their leader, Adolf Hitler, needed only 10 years 
to transform the whole country into a totalitarian military regime. In 1933, he received 44% of all votes and passed a special act granting him as the new chancellor dictatorial power. He became not only a head of the Nazi government, but the absolute leader of the whole nation, the Führer. Adolf Hitler arrived with no grand economic design, but he soon received a great support from almost the whole nation. The Nazi ideology was not very sophisticated. The Führer's only work, Mein Kampf, contained a couple of consistent ideas, but nothing original. Quite important was the chain of arguments which led from the supposed existence of the master race to the supposed German right to the extra-living space. Hitler took a hierarchy of races for granted, saying that the bearers of human cultural development were the Aryans, and their mightiest enemy were Jews. His racist Nationalism led immediately to the introduction of anti-Semitic measures, which received their clearest formulation in the Nuremberg Laws of 1935. At the beginning of Hitler's regime, the Jewish population of Germany consisted of over a half million people who represented less than 1% of the total German population of 62 million people. At the same time, there were about 9.5 million Jewish people in the whole European continent. The Nazi racist criteria identified Jews according to the religion practiced by their grandparents. Consequently, the Nazis classified as Jews thousands of people who had converted from Judaism to another religion, and among them Roman Catholic priests, nuns, and Protestant Lutheran ministers. In 1939, Hitler gained full control of the German military forces, industry, and the government, which eventually made him ready to invade Poland on the 1st of September 1939. This date marked the beginning of the Second World War. In spring 1940, Hitler captured Denmark and Norway, and then France and the Netherlands. The next target was England, but, is, but it brought the first major defeat. In June 1941, the German army invaded the Soviet Union, which was Hitler's previously very powerful ally, and after a successful initial campaign, it suffered devastating losses. At the beginning of 1945, the war in Europe came to its final stage. The American and Russian forces captured Berlin, forcing Germany to surround them. On the 30th of April 1945, Adolf Hitler committed suicide, leaving behind an unaccountable number of human tragedies, tragedies, deaths, 
and sufferings. His war has brought about many changes in the history of the German nation and the whole world. Germany lost four and a half million of its own citizens, including three and a half million soldiers. The Nazi racial hatred took also six million Jewish lives. There is a specific term in the history of Christianity in Germany known as Kirchenkampf, the church struggle. It refers to the various political and social aspects of life of the Christian churches in Hitler's Germany. The National Socialist Party quickly revealed its real intention towards Christianity. The famous Article 24 of the party program declared the idea of so-called positive Christianity, in which the party expected all Christian denominations to support national socialism. The churches could enjoy their freedom if they did not offend the German racist sense of justice and morality. The situation of the Catholic Church in Germany seemed to be clear as the German bishops committed the Church to a policy of official opposition to the National Socialists. They declared that the Nazi ideology was against the Church doctrinal and social teaching, though some bishops and priests openly supported the regime. The article also revealed the Nazi relation towards Jews, making them responsible for the downfall of the German Reich. The Nazis adopted into its ideology most of the populist beliefs that blame Jewish people for all the miseries of the German nation. The defeat of the First World War and the post-war difficulties. If Germany then was to be saved, it was necessary, according to the Nazis, to fight against the Jews the religion and culture. The source of the Nazis' hatred and their merciless relationship towards the Jews may be found in the psychological and sociological phenomenon called the German, the German guilt. It was the guilt of defeat during the First World War and the guilt of an unjust peace treaty. Adolf Hitler was the person who was able to transform this guilt into a new sense of national existence, but the common need for revenge.